What's good YouTube? This is Al B back with another video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to set up your Arturia Mini Lab MK2 with FL Studio. Now the method I'm gonna be showing you today is gonna to be using my custom made template and it's gonna give you three different modes and out of these modes, you're gonna be able to tap out your drums like you would on a traditional drum machine. So you can assign different sounds, different effects, even sample chops to your channels in FL Studio and then you can press the drum pad for that channel and be able to tap out your drums like you're working on an MPC or any traditional drum machine. Another mode you're gonna get is transport mode where you can play and pause and record, stop, fast forward, rewind, wind go from pattern to song mode all from the controller without having to touch your mouse or keyboard the third and final mode is going to be channel mode which allows you to jump between different channels in your channel rack so if you're playing a melody with instrument one in channel one and you're loop recording and then you want to come back and play a counter melody with instrument two that's in channel two then you can do that all from the mini lab mk2 using the Al B custom made template, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys how this works in FL Studio, and then I'm gonna show you how to get it set up for yourself. So make sure and stay tuned through the whole video so you know how it works and how to get it set up. All right, guys, without further ado, this is Al B. Let's get into it. Yes, sir. All right, guys, so the first thing I want to do is actually show you how this works in FL Studio. That way you can get an understanding of the benefits of it and really why it's worth getting the Albi template and getting that set up for yourselves. Um, the first thing to understand is that you have eight pads here, but you have two banks. So you have one through eight. And then when you press the pad button up top left, you are now on pads nine through 16. That's gonna be important because that's the same way we're going to use it in FL Studio. So we have three different modes here. First mode is gonna be MPC mode. In this mode, your drum pads act like they would on a traditional MPC or any other traditional drum machine. Pad one will trigger channel one where I have a kick today. Pad two will trigger channel two where there's a snare. Pad three will trigger another snare, so forth, and so on. So that would be channels one through eight, and then if I hit pad, I'm on channels nine through 16. All right, so now I have 16 different channels that I can trigger for my drum pads. And be able to tap out my drums, okay? And that way I can assign drum sounds. I can assign sound effects. I can assign sample chops to these drum pads and be able to tap it out while I'm loop recording, right? And I don't have to touch the FL Studio. So this is how you're gonna be able to get the best use out of these drum pads and not have to use the FPC method. Your MIDI data is gonna be separate and then you can route it straight to their individual mixer tracks, okay? That's gonna give you your full flexibility when it's time to arrange and lay out your complete beat, all right? The second mode is going to be what I call transport mode. And in this mode, you're going to be able to play and pause. You're gonna be able to stop. You're gonna be able to enable record. You're gonna be able to fast forward and rewind, okay? You're gonna be able to go from pattern to song mode. You're gonna also be able to go up and down in the channel rack to change what channel your keys are playing. Right now it's on the perk. If I go up, it goes to the other perk. Okay, so again, pad one is play and pause. Pad two is going to be your stop. Pad three is going to be how you disable and enable record. Pad four is going to be how you rewind. Pad five is fast forward. Pad six is going from pattern to song mode. Pad seven is going up in the channel rack. Pad eight is going down in the channel rack. So you can navigate all around FL Studio in the pattern in the song. You can play and pause and record all without having to touch FL Studio. So if you really like to use your controller for its full functionality and what it can do, this template will help you do that, all right? So that is the second mode, the transport mode. Now the third mode is 
channel mode. And when your pads are in channel mode, it just allows you to jump between channels. Pad one will take you to channel one where I have a kick. Per press pad two and it takes you to channel two where I have a snare. All right, so you can jump between channels and control those different channels. And then you can play those different channels with your keys, okay? So this, this is just another way of navigating around FL Studio. And if you're loop recording and really wanted to just focus on using your hands and using your controller, and you don't really want to deal with the mouse that much, this is how you're going to do that. This is going to be how you get the full functionality out of the Mini Lab MK2, all right, with FL Studio. So those are the three modes. And of course, you can jump to channels 9 through 16 if you hit the pad mode button okay hit pad if it's lit then that means that you're on channels 9 through 16 okay all right guys now that i've shown you how this works let me give you just a quick summary so to change modes you're going to hold shift and then you hit the number um for the mode you want to go to in my case i have npc mode here assigned to pad 2 okay and now in npc mode i could tap out my drums All right, all the way up to the first 16 channels with this is the first eight channels. When I press the pad button, now this is the second eight channels or channels nine through 16. Right, so that's how I can trigger any of the first 16 channels from the Minilab MK2. The second mode, which is gonna be transport mode, okay, which I've assigned to pad three. The second mode, transport mode, is going to allow pad one to be play and pause. Pad two is stop. Okay. Pad three is enable and disable record. Pad four is rewind. And pad five is fast forward. Let me show you in the playlist. So I'm going to fast forward first with pad five and then rewind with pad four. Okay. Pad six changes between pattern and song mode. And then pad seven, let me go back to the channel rack. Pad seven will go up in the channel rack and then pad eight will go down. This is this is in transport mode. Now I'm gonna go to the final mode, which is just channel mode. And when you select the pad, it will jump to that channel in the channel rack and you can use your keys to play it. So if I wanted to play Omnisphere, which is in channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, channel 11. So let me go to pad and then hit three. Sorry, I miscounted. It's in channel 10, so I hit pad and channel 10, or pad two, which is channel 10, right? <clears throat> so then I hit this pad here and I control Omnisphere, or, or I can play a melody with Omnisphere. Right? And this is really powerful, guys, when you think about what this is like when you want to loop record. You can essentially make the Minilab MK2 just like a full-blown sequencer without having to fight FL Studio. You can pretty much build your beat all the way up just from the controller itself and not get caught up fussing with FL Studio, okay? So take, for example, if I go back to MPC mode, I'm, my, right now I have Omnisphere selected, so my keys are going to play a melody, right? And then while that's looping, right, I come back and play my drums. Right, and that way you can, and then you can even come back, right? And now let's say, and that way you can really build onto your beat. And let's say, for example, the next thing I wanted to do was, I don't know, maybe I wanted to go back up and play another melody on top of that. Then I could go to my transport mode. I went up one channel. Right, and I really can get all over the doll. I can I can go everywhere I want to in the channel rack. I can do a lot from just the controller itself, giving you the full functionality of this controller. And this is how you're gonna really be able to build up a beat pretty quickly without getting caught fighting with the doll, fighting with FL Studio, okay? This is the best setup using the Al B template. Now that you guys kind of see how it works, um, I'm going to show you how to get it set up. First thing you need to do is go to Arturia.com, register your controller, and make sure you download the MIDI Control Center software. Also, go ahead and download the Albi template. The link will be in the description. We'll take you from there. 
so once you have downloaded the Albi template, you should um, have a zip folder and you want to unzip the folder and it should be called something like mini lab MK2. This is Albi. Albi. And when you unzip it and look inside, you should see three different files. One should be fls-channel-lb.minilabmk2. One should be fls-mpc-lb. And one should be fls-transport-lb. So those should be the three files that you see in there. Okay. So once you have those unzipped and ready to go, you're going to come to MIDI Control Center. And what you're going to do is you're going to do a import. Well, first of all, make sure that you're running the latest firmware version, all right, and make sure that um, the control center is up to date as well. Then you're going to do a import, and you're going to navigate to where you saved and unzipped the Albi template folder. And I'm going to start by importing FLS-MPC Albi first, okay? Okay, so that imports that for me. And then you're going to do the same thing for the other two files. You're going to do it for channel and for MPC and for transport. So just import all of those by just repeating import, go to the folder and, and select them. And just do that until you have all three user templates loaded into the MIDI control center here. And then you're gonna actually start to push these. So how I like to do it is I like to push the MPC mode here to memory two. And that's going to push it to pad two here on your controller as far as mode selection. And so what that's going to do is it's going to mean that when you want to enable MPC mode, we're going to push it to memory two. And when we want to enable on our keyboard, we have to hold shift and hit pad two. And that's going to go to the, the mode that we stored on pad two. OK, we can't store on pad one. That's like a, a, a read only. We can't. It's a default. So we can only store to pad two and so on. So we just pushed MPC mode to, to pad two or to mode two. Now we're gonna push transport mode here. We're gonna select transport mode in the MIDI control center. I'm gonna go to memory three and I'm going to push the store to boom. So now I've stored the transport mode to memory three. Now, finally, I'm going to store channel mode to memory four. Boom. And now I should have mode two being my MPC mode where I can tap my drums out. Mode three should be transport mode where I can play and pause and stop and record and rewind, fast forward, go between pattern and song mode and go up and down in my channel rack. Okay, so that mode is loaded on pad three. The channel mode, which allows me to jump between channels by just pressing the pad for that channel one through eight and then channel nine through 16 on the second bank. So let's double check that that's actually set up. An easy way to check is I actually have it color coded, which you can change these colors, but just for the sake of verifying the template, we're gonna to go to mode two and you should see blue pads. Every pad should be blue when you touch it for the first nine channels. And then when I go to channel nine through 16, every pad should be red. That's how you're gonna know you loaded the Albi template, okay? That's the Albi MPC template. MPC mode. Now let's go to transport mode. And in this mode, pad one should be red. Pad two should be yellow. Pad three should be red. And the rest of the pads are going to be red until the last two are white and red. So red, white, red, 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 yellow, red. That's how you know that you have the transport mode loaded. Let's go to check out the channel mode. The first nine, sorry, the first eight channels will be green. The second nine channels will be purple. Sorry, the second eight channels will be purple. And that's how you know you have the Alb channel mode loaded, all right? That's just a quick way to verify that you actually pushed the different modes to the controller and that you can recall them, all right, by switching the mode. Shift, go to the mode, shift, go to the mode. All right, in my case, shift two, where I stored MPC mode, shift three, where I stored transport mode, shift four, where I stored channel mode. All right, so that's how you're gonna verify that you have it. Now that we know that we have it actually pushed to the controller and saved, let's actually go to FL Studio and set it up there.
All right, guys, here we are. I have FL Studio up and I am inside of the MIDI settings. You can go to just options, MIDI settings, or just press F10. And as you can see, my input Arturia Mini Lab is actually in fail mode. And that is because I did not close Control Center. Make sure you guys actually close the Control Center before you open up FL Studio. They both cannot access the control at the same time. So make sure you actually close out MIDI Control Center. Now I'm going to revert. Now I'm going to refresh device list and now I can see it and I can enable it. Okay. So now let's go through the actual settings here in FL Studio. So first let's make sure that we see Arturia Mini Lab MK2 in the output section. Make sure we also see it in the input section and you want to see a green power icon here. If you do not see the green power icon, then you need to come and make sure you enable the Arturia Mini Lab MK2. The next thing you're going to want to do is set controller type to M audio oxygen 49 slash 61. Okay. It's a drop down menu M audio oxygen 49 61. Then you're going to want to make sure your Omni preview MIDI channel is set to channel 16. Very important. All these things are very important actually. Okay. So there you go. We have Arturia mini lab MK2 enabled controller type M audio oxygen 49 slash 61 and Omni preview set to MIDI channel 16. Now let's go and make sure that we're actually working. Now let's go actually verify that the template is working correctly. Let me open up my pr latest project. All right guys, so now I have my project open and the first thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that the templates are working correctly. I have MPC mode stored on pad two, so shift two takes me to MPC mode. So channel one sh should be triggered when I press pad one. Channel two should be triggered by pad two. Channel three will be triggered by pad three, so forth and so on. All right. So that works. The pads are blue when I press them, so I know that NPC mode is working fine. Now let's go check transport mode. I'm gonna press shift, mode three, where I store transport mode and pad one should play and pause. It does, pad two should stop. Pad three should enable and disable record. Pad four should rewind. Pad five should fast forward. Pad six should go between pattern and song mode and it does. Pull back up my channel rack and pad seven should go up in the channel rack and pad eight should go down in the channel rack, okay? So that verifies that my transport mode is working fine. Now let me finally go to channel mode, which I saved to pad four. So now I'm in channel mode and pressing pad one should take me to channel one. Boom, and now my key should play channel one. Okay, press channel two. My key should now play channel two. All right, now let's just jump to, I don't know, channel 11. I press the pad button up top to change to channels nine through 16. And then I'm gonna press channel 11 right here. And now I should be on my sub lab. All right, so my keys play that channel. So boom, channel mode works fine as well. So there you have it. You have your NPC mode, you have your transport mode and you have your channel mode, giving you full functionality over FL Studio, allowing you to navigate, allowing you to do loop recording. And really you can get a beat going really quickly and get a vibe going without fighting FL Studio. You can play a melody, right? Let me go to, you can play a melody. Then you can come back and while that melody is looping, you can play your drum. You can play your drums on top of it. Right, and then you can come back and play another instrument and play a counter melody. So you really can build your beat up without using FL Studio as far as the DAW goes, as far as the mouse and keyboard. You can do it all from the functionality of your controller using the Albi template and the three different modes that come with it. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so I can keep bringing y'all this dope content. Until next time, we out.